Mr. Free, can I first ask you, what are your earliest memories of the fair? I go back, shall I say, to when I was probably about 12, 12 years old, something like that. Because in those days, Jennings had the, what they called the scenic whales, and they were allowed for a number of years to run on Friday evenings for the hospital. And we knew Jennings is even then used to go into the pay box to collect the money so that there was no argument what was taken and given to the hospital. Al's got a, a small selection of photographs from around that time. That's right, you like some of those. Oh, there is there's the very thing with the wonderful whales. <laughs> yes, that's that's the ones you were talking about. That's the ones it? I yes. was talking about, yeah. These whales cars weighed about half a ton and they were lifted off of the wagon by a crane on the back of the engines and it used to be marvelous to be able to watch those go down swing over down into its place that was a, that was a long job to build up a machine oh like that. yeah must have been must yeah have been. full day's job with the steam and that there was more of an atmosphere to a ride like that than with these modern rides. Oh so yes, I mean when you compare today's setup, you've got to admire the way they're worked because the bulk of them now simply consists of one vehicle. All you do is to let the sides down and off you go very nearly. That is quite Sectornary. true, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? It's, I it's mean, changed. when you think of the amount of labour was required back in these days and compare with what they use now, really the only ones that use a great deal are the dodgem. That is true, very true, isn't it? What yeah. do you remember about the music? Oh, there you had the old organs. There was one organ on the uh, whales, but then with that, you see, we had another man who came from Reading, Charlie Heal. I used to have a roundabout about another 50 yards up from here. And on top of that, believe it or not, in those days, it was the, just the start of films, black white films. And there were two different people touring the fairs, showing films. One was called Taylor, one was called Dooner. And they simply put up a tent, if you like, a long tent, and you paid to go in to watch the films. Well, now my connections now start then rather more because of the Taylor. The Taylor family became mixed up with Jennings. Henry Jennings, the father, he married, I think I'm right in saying, a Bunce. Old Mrs. Bunce was absolutely a gypsy down to the last. I mean, nothing wrong about it. Don't think there's anything wrong about it, though I'm not far from it. But she was typically a gypsy, that Henry Jennings. Well, the two sons then became Jack and um, Jim. Well, Jack and Jim began to pull up with the two daughters belonging to Taylors. And that's where I began to meet them. In those days, of course, there weren't many cars. And the trip from Marlborough after packing up on the Sunday, their next date used to be at Sirencester. And they had to, to avoid going down Victoria Hill with these heavy loads. They got permission to go across a track through some farmland this side of Swindon, which brought them out onto the Stratton Road, the other side. Well, in those days, sometimes, I used to pick up Jim with an old Ford Model T and take him on towards there so that he made sure the gates were open, ready for when the 
engines arrived to get through and close them again afterwards. Well, through that, well, I often used to go down to Swindon, this is in the winter times, because Mrs. Taylor, old Mrs. Taylor, still was alive, and she lived in Ferndale Road, almost next to Edwards. And I often used to go down there and have lunch, believe it or not. And that's how I came to know these three girls. There were three, actually, but only two of them stayed with the fair. The other one, Mari, who was the oldest, she married a Swindon man. But the other two married the two Jennings brothers. And that's how we kept up the connection for years. And one year, about when I was 17 or 18, I suppose it was, I was started work in the bank at Newbury. And Jennings has decided to try out a winter run in the wharf at Newbury. And they set up there for the whole of the winter season. And I used to go around there time after time, playing, rolling the pennies down in order to try and attract some more attention from them. But they were some lovely girls, there's no doubt. And both of them, unfortunately, are both dead, as you probably know. Yes. But uh, Vic, she was the one principally I got to know. She was a lovely girl. And now her daughter is now Mrs. Whiteleg. Louise, do you not find that showman are, are really great people to know? Oh, goodness no. me, Miss Ray, yes. I always stick up for them. There's, uh, there's bad people in everything, if you like to argue over that. But they're most open-hearted. I mean, you only had to look at it in the paper, what, a couple of weeks ago, because there was trouble up at the cricketers after the first fair, was it? And I saw in the paper that they immediately accepted responsibility to a certain extent because said it was one of their staff mm. and they offered to make good the damage. What more could they do? That's right, and as that turned out, the chaps who were actually causing the, the trouble were from London and had nothing to do with the fair at all. Didn't know. he really? So it was very good at the showman's game yeah. to... Uh, but that's the typical of down. them. I mean, you only got to ask them for a donation Sorry. or this or that and they'll give it to you. They're very genuine people. They are yes. very generous. And they've complied. I know we've had arguments about the fairs for years. Do away with it, put it up on the common. But they've tried to fall in with everything that the police had asked for. You see, oh, you would remember that the side stalls back years always used to be right against the pavements on either side, so that there was only a way through the centre. Well, that the police said that was not good enough with all this traffic these days. And that was why then there was a, enough room left, either on the top side and the bottom side, and the stalls were pushed in towards the centre. So at least if there was a fire or anything like that, an engine could get right through either side. Kept the thing going without much trouble then. Because you were involved in a lot of the discussions after the two big fires, were you not? When you were on the council then. Yes. And I, I think I went to a couple of the meetings, public meetings, and you stuck up for the fair. Oh, you too true. I remember yes. it used to, we used to call it a hardy annual. But every year, somebody on the council said, do away with the fair, put it up on the gun. And there always used to be arguments. Now, I, I can't remember what year, but there was one year where it was rather agitated, and quite a number of the members of the guild turned up to the meeting. Uh, they couldn't say anything, obviously, but I stuck up for them to the end. I couldn't do more. No, I think that was a, a good thing. You, you've never regretted sticking up for the fair. Oh, no, far, far from it. This is a part of Marlborough's heritage and tradition. Of course it is. A thing which, you know, has been with us and hopefully will be with us for, yes. for many years to come. I hope so, anyhow. I said about the Jenningses were allowed to run on a Friday night for the hospital. 
Well, that went on for a number of years until trouble started. A man by the name of, oh, now you've asked me. He came from Bristol, and he'd got a side stall, one of these bingo things or something, whatever you call it. And because Jennings were allowed to open on the Friday night, he said, well, if he can, I can. And immediately that caused the trouble, and that was the last time they were allowed to open on a Friday, until you had it last year, was it, or the year before? Year 1989, I think it was. For some reason, I don't know who managed to get permission for them to run on a Friday was night again. Centenary of the Showman's Guild, wasn't it, a special? Of course, this was in the days when the hospital was self-supported. Oh, right? yes, That's absolutely. Right. What do you remember about Owen Hurd? I know he has uh, a lot to do with the film. Owen Hurd was the most wonderful man. He rented the rights to the ground from the Ellsbury estate. And it used to take hours to settle where everybody goes, because he used to go around with a tape measure, and how many feet do you want? How much does the next man? And there was always arguments going on, and he used to swear, they used to swear each, uh, at each other, but it always came off in the end, all right, but he held that for years. And then when he, ca he gave up, the councils took over. And we bought the rights to the two fairs from the Aylesbury set up for £1,200. And I'm not sure whether that's even finished paying for now. Because you can get what is known as a 60-year loan from the Public Works Board if they pass it, so that you only pay a very small amount each year. And I know that it was getting up towards the end of this century, I'm pretty certain, uh, before it would really be paid off. <laughs> that sort of loan was the forerunners of the, the loans you can get nowadays. Then, oh, yes. It? yes. Yes. Probably so. That was a good investment, really, for the... the oh, yes. yes. The only thing I used to be against it, I know that's not fair, but uh, was building of council houses. You couldn't get less than 60, but if you wanted to build houses, then you took out a 60-year loan. Well, there's any amount of money still being paid by Kennet for all these that we built down in the Mead and so forth. The only snag is, of course, that when you look at the amount of interest you paid over the 60 years, well, the cost of all these council houses can be twice as much as what was paid for them. <laughs> I've heard that uh, a lot of the showmen used to make their own sweets. Oh, yes. That's another interesting thing, because I'm going back again. It wasn't a lot of the smaller people that hadn't got electric lighting, and we used to use flares, if you know what I mean. Naked flames, naphtha flares, which used to hang up. And if you went up the street on the Friday night, you could see the shadows through the back of the stall, covered over, and you could see them making what they call spit rock. I used to hang it on a hook, and then you'd keep on twisting it over and over, making it into a uh, thinner, till you cut it up and sold. But spit rock was the name of it. And it was quite, to me, it was quite fascinating to see them going over the hook in the, the shadow. <laughs> and those were the days before health and safety. Hoisting, oh, hating. yes. There was but nothing whatsoever. No. Nothing whatsoever. They just did just as they <laughs> wanted. And nobody died from any germs, did they? No. <laughs> Never gave it a thought. No. I don't think it killed anybody. <laughs> What do you remember about the clear-up operation on the Sunday morning? 
in years gone by, because now the council just come in. We were run. very good. The council, of course, until we became part of Kennet, our own council was responsible for sweeping up, and they used to move in. We had a gang moved in six o'clock on Sunday morning and start sweeping from top to bottom and finished up in those days by we've got a, a tank trailer which was horse drawn but containing instead of water you had disinfectant put in it and it used to go right up and down the street after they swept up but you don't see that these days we were talking about go uh, about the leveling of all the machines of course at the lower end of the high street years ago there was a steeper slope was there not before they put the railings that's and built right up about yes 15 built up they built yeah. up the road quite a lot further that's right, because that was very steep there wasn't it yes. because not many machines were built no. there were they because no the, that's why you find, as i say right at the end you had the boxing booth which of course that was, was merely a tent it didn't matter really being very precise about levels and of course a lot of the um, bigger vans were pushed down that end so as to be out of the way yes so that didn't really matter so didn't much matter. no that's right i think i can remember once there was a, a roundabout right at the end this is many years ago and that was probably needed packing up at the bottom end didn't it then Odd there one. were occasionally somebody well i was telling you about stout well he had to build up right at the bottom end of the town because that was the only space yes. left. This would be in the days before showmen had their piece of ground, wouldn't it? When you say these others came in, nowadays they have their piece of ground, which is like their... Well, their of course, privilege. as you know now, although the money is paid to Kennet, the showmen's guild look after it themselves. They pay a lump sum to... Kennet and then collect individually from their own members and there's no arguments I mean these days there's no arguments as to where A goes or B goes you're in you're out it's exactly the same setup that's right doesn't matter what you find you might find they would let in somebody occasionally for the second fair that hasn't come to the little mop try to make a little bit of variety. Yeah. You say about the old days again, we used to have quite a number of small people who used to arrive on Saturday morning, not fair people in the true sense of the term, but cheap jacks. And I always remember one man up the top who used to sell sweets and chocolates. Cheap, you know, you are a bar of this a bar of something else, five shillings. No. All right, come on, I'll give it half a crown. And it used to go on. And he sold, I used to buy some stuff, because I had a sweet tooth, but you had several of that type of thing going on in those days, but it no longer coming. They used to sell confetti at the fair at one stage, didn't they? Yes, I used to for one or times. Well, in fact, devices still allow it. At the carnival fair, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. They still allow it. Mm, it's good fun. But it was a pity it was given up here. You used to, as youngsters, well, of course, you went wild. I mean, I, but it was a big seller. There was no doubt about that. Did you find? When the fair was about that trade um, in the shop in those days, did it affect trade very much? You you hear the traders complaining that they've lost well, this and that. Obviously, you didn't do so much trade. No argument about that. But you've got to remember that the fairs attracted people from the villages all round, but but wouldn't come in into the town in the ordinary way any other days and they would also look round the shops and what you lost on one thing they remembered seeing something and they would come back later and I won't accept that by and large that you lost out 
uh, a great deal. Of course, the food shops were gain. It's yep. just like a little town to feed up there now, isn't it? Yes. Yes, they, it is. Yeah. No, they forget the other side of the story simply because they've not got so many people coming in they think it's terrible. Most people just go and do their shopping perhaps earlier in the week, don't they? Yes. That's right, so really there's, there's nothing lost no. at all, really, is there? How do you see the fairs going on in the future? Do you think they'll more or less continue on the same lines that they've been for the past century? Or? Well, I'm afraid one day it won't be a case of the local authority stopping it because you can argue about the rights there are rights i mean it goes back for hundreds of years but if the government of the day decide that enough is enough on a main road well then you've only had to look round it's all gone i mean sirencester used to have it in there Main Square, gone, and you've only got to go look around any amount of the fairs over the whole of the country where they're now barred and have got to go outside or find somewhere near at hand to set up. And I'm afraid possibly we may lose the same thing. Once it goes somewhere else, it loses that atmosphere, doesn't it? Atmosphere it's gone. It's easy to say put it up on the common. But you've lost the whole thing. Also looking through the Morbid, well, through the Morbid Times and other records, I found this. This uh, actually relates to your father. It refers to a meeting that went on in February of 1931, look, and basically uh, goes through all the charges, you see, that the, the showmen were paid. Yeah. That, that they had to pay, sorry. Well, <laughs> well, well. So you're welcome to keep that. Coconuts a shilling a foot. <laughs> Dart sixpence a foot. <laughs> Hawkers, trays and barrows. Shilling a time. 1931 extra. You're welcome to keep that because I've got another copy. Can I? Yes, yeah, so you can have a, Thank a good you. read of that. Yes, I'd like. The Wiltshire County Records Office, of course, that's a wealth of information if one has the time to look through records. Yes, you can spend a day and still Because get that's people. grown so much that even there, I don't think county can cope with it really. No. There's a wealth of information to be dug out if one can manage it. Yeah. yeah. I've also got another article here that was taken from the Wiltshire Gazette in 1956 and it's about a chap called a Mr Rogers who used to live up Kingsbury Square. Tom Rogers? That's right. There's a picture of him there, if you have a look. And it mentions his recollections about how he was hired at the fair when he was younger. Oh, he was quite a notoriety. I mean, oh, oh, well, oh. well. I say, when you were young, do you remember anybody, any of your elders talking to you at the time about the hiring that used to go on at the fair? I can't, to be perfectly honest. Although I ought to be able to say I was because, I mean... Uh, my father was on the council for 50 years and I took over from him when he packed up and did another 832, so we didn't do too badly. I mean, that was a continuous name Yes. going back before the turn of the century. Yes. And a much respected name on the council then, Mr. Freeman. Was well, one night you were mayor six times. Yes, was it? my yeah. father was mayor six, six times. times. Yes, and that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Your I record. Think, I think. I so. think so. Yes. Well, we tried our best. Yes. Sure. Well, well, well. Well, I hand it to you, gentlemen. What you've got hold of is it could be made up into a most interesting. You're welcome to keep that now. Am I? Have a read afterwards. Yeah, I took an extra Bless copy. Bless you. you know, so, uh, it only shows what can be produced if, if you've got the patience and determined to do it. I think it's remarkable. And I'll also Thank you. let you know. I wish I could there. remember that, but I can't. <laughs> I was going to say, with the BBC coming to the town, I, I presume that would have been quite an event in those yeah. days. Because... They don't have the tiny cameras, which they have nowadays, so they were huge great things then, weren't they? So. Oh, very, very different. <laughs>
Well, uh... What do you remember about the two fires in the town and how that basically affected the fairs? I know it caused a lot of controversy in between those that wanted the fair. Oh, curiously enough, the, the um, Holly Tea Rooms, thinking of the big fire, um, I don't think it caused it caused uh, arguments again about the fair, as we say. But on the other hand, it was not altered because of that, because it it wasn't on the weekend. If it had been on a weekend, well, of course, it would have caused absolutely chaos, and there'd been arguments, and you'd have done away with the fair, I suppose, in five minutes. But that was because of those two fires. The other one was Dibbles, further down, where Neats. Yes. Uh, both occurred during the week, but it was probably the aftermath of that was when they made them create a roadway along top and bottom so that at least uh, a fire engine could get through without any trouble. Because there are several breaks in the fair as we see it now. I, I think there are about three, aren't there, in the course of the line of the fair? Yeah. You had to leave certain axes because you've got Hillier's yard, which in those days was a builder's yard yeah. and therefore they would got the right of access all the time. And then you, you had to leave an access for the Carson and Ball yard. You had to leave another access for what's the one where by the SEB, the Angel Yard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which they were forced to because they were rights of way. I mean, from a usable point of view. Because at the moment there is quite a considerable gap outside Waitrose. Anyway, the, the yard that is adjacent to Waitrose at the moment. And there's also one down by Figgins Lane as well. Is there anything actually written down to sort of say that this has to be so? Not to my knowledge. No. I suppose the council will have said, well, because Tratton's, I mean, well, they had to have an access down there because it was dependent on their vehicles being to get in and out during two days. And I suppose uh, the council may have insisted that those various openings were left. What sort of say does the council have with regard to the fair? What do they insist upon nowadays, you know, with regards to the layout of the fair, um, how it's run, or is that left entirely to the Showman's Guild? And um, it's left entirely to them now, providing they uh, keep within the confines of the ground that is laid out. I think I'm right in saying that there has to be a certain... They used to put their vans right up by Mondays. Opposite... Yes, by the I side. can remember them there. Well, you can remember yes. those. But then they were told they must move those. And the same thing applied down the other end, in as much that although you made the bulk of the traffic go round through George Lane, you had to leave... If somebody said they'd got to get up Sun Lane, as I call it, it isn't Gun Lane now. Holly Lane now, isn't it? <laughs> but that was the reason you had to leave a, a sufficient gap at the end of the road there for anybody to go up there. But by and large, as I said before, the Showman's Guild have always shown a 100% willingness to do their best to conform with whatever they've been asked to do. They're also great people, showmen, the Showman's Guild and the people are great people to want to know locals. Both Ian and myself have, you know, introduced ourselves when in our research now, and they're very helpful, yes. aren't they? They go to well, the they, end of the world. They're, they're as proud of it, mm. and they've got a right to That's... be proud of it. It isn't a get rich quick and get out. As I said, you've got generation after generation, and it'll still go on like that. I mean, the Edwardses, well, they've still got exactly the same thing as Jennings. They've still got the youngsters coming on, and they take over. When you lived in the high street, over the furniture shop, 
Were you ever worried about a fire when the fair was in, or you had great confidence that... Never gave it a thought. You didn't, did it? No. To be perfectly honest, (laughs) never gave it a thought. So you had complete confidence that all would be well, and that's right. Well, I suppose you could say that, yes. Yes, that's right, which was nice, really, wasn't it? Because because all of these worries about the fair and anti-fair things come from new people to the town, do you not feel... You've only got to look at that in other spheres. Yes, that's what everywhere... It's the newcomers that try to make trouble rather than the old. Unfortunately, the old people are disappearing. I mean, once I'm gone, the freeze are finished. Yes, that's right. Put it like that. Yes. My son will never come back in. He won't, no. No, that's... And that's like so many of them. He certainly won't be forgotten anyway. No. Because I often sit and think I've got nothing else to do. But I keep on going round the town as to see how many of the old names are left. Two or three, that's all. Vincent Head's down the bottom. Yes. Herds you talked about, well, that's still the son of Owen Herd, plus his son now is taking over. Yes. And there's one other, I can't. I know there's only three businesses it's left. It's a changing world, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's all uh, outsiders, like, wait, well, you, yeah. uh, the big boys have all moved in, and that's and all about it. Yeah. Don't you think, though, that if all these new people move into the town, they should expect to abide by the rules and the traditions of the town rather than try and subject their own... Quite belief? right. Unfortunately, they think they can come in and rule the roost for some extraordinary reason. Why, I don't know. But you've only got to... Fine now, I mean with this uh, massive building out along Bath Road, Barton Park, or whatever they call it. Well, look at the number. In the old days, I could go out and I'd know everybody I met. I can go up the street these days yeah. and you wouldn't meet a soul you knew. No. There's another so, photograph there that might interest you. There, there is a, a lighthouse slip at the bottom of that one, that's Butlins. I don't know whether that was the chap that uh, that you were talking about earlier. Yes, that's been the same one yeah. for generations. Yes. Herbert, you said, Herbert, didn't you? Frank Herbert. I think that was the gentleman yeah. who used to come and pick some pear from you, was it? Frank, <laughs> wasn't that's right, he was retired. I can remember. <laughs> I ought not to say these things, not for publication, but I used to sit up late at night on Saturdays when I was down the street, to watch them start pulling down. And you used to have one or two locals used to say, can I give you a hand? And I watched one particular gentleman, no names, no pack drill. He was helping to pack up the various dolls, etc., for them. And then he looked around, whip one out and hide it and carry on again, so he got pe- paid for helping them, and also for robbing them. <laughs> That's 1957, I think, that photograph, that one. Yeah. I think you've got some, some more towards yes. the back, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. You probably remember the old... I'll flick through a couple of pages. There's one here of the old wall of death. You can probably... This comes into that one, is it? The Wall of Death. Right? Yeah. That's the same as that. The, one, isn't the it? man on the motorbikes. <laughs> if I remember once in my young days, a globe of death came. They had this enclosed like mesh globe and the motorbike. Oh yeah, yes. In that one. I yes, a complete that globe. That's, that's right. right. So yeah. they did a complete. That's right. I just remember seeing that many years ago, yeah. of course, before I was really old enough to take much interest. Yes, in this that's sort quite of true. Thing. Yes. Quite true. Well, you've done well, you know. Yes, between us, we've tried to collect bits of information on the old fairs and, of course, updating on the modern stuff because we feel this in the next generation. So obviously, Ian is the, the man of the moment because I'm getting on a bit older now, you see, of no. course. Right? So <laughs> he, he's, he's going to be the, the local mock historian, I rather feel. I the pity of it was, to a certain extent, over the big shows, when you see these uprights, they never worried to put up the 
fascia boards. Oh, no, it's, no. Because it was only a one-night stand. Mm -hmm. And it's such a pity because if you go to a big fair yeah. where they're running for several days, you see the complete fascias right. going right round these big... And that makes the machine... It makes it, oh, yes. most attractive. Yes. There's a photograph in the back of this book. It's, it's a photocopy of a photograph, actually, if I can... It's this one here. It's it's probably a bit before your time. It's towards the end of the last century. There's a set of gallopers at the top at the top of the street. Yes, uh, well, that used to be Heels, uh, who I think came from Reading. They were on the ground for quite a number of years. And you used to get those tall things with the bell on top as well, didn't you? I don't know what they're called. A striker is. Uh, six months ago, or whatever it was, the bulky people that fancied their the men who fancied their chances bang on the piece of wood down the bottom, and the bell would shoot up to a certain height. If they could make it ring at the top, well, then they got their money back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, it is a striker. There was more competitiveness in the old games oh, at the fair. Yeah. That's right. Many many people often went to the fair, perhaps maybe to show off slightly to their friends, maybe, you know. Exactly. Perhaps. With the living wagons in the high street along with the fair, did it actually make the fair seem different? Was it like, because it was more, more or less must have been a, a town in a town, you know? Yes, because when the... The vans, or caravans, and of the smaller people, always used to be against the pavement, and then they'd build up their sideshow in front of it. So they weren't taking up really any more room, but it was squashed, if you like to put it like that. But there wasn't the same with today, with the alteration, and doing away with all the fans. They can even put in some small side shows right in the center up yes, this end. That's... Would you say that the fairs are basically the highlight of the year, not only for yourself, but for the town? For the town, I don't think so. Because you put your own finger on the spot by saying the number of newcomers who come in. It doesn't mean the same to them as it did to us in our young days, you will sort of look forward mm. to the fairs coming every year. And as a youngster, you used to go round to see what was coming in, as I said, at the Roebuck and so on. Mm. And you used to go out on the Friday to see what there was. But the newcomers haven't got the same interest. I can well remember my mother telling me that when I was just a little babe, she used to take me to the fair, well, with my father as well, obviously, and you used to go, although I was too young to go on it, you were taken to the fair because it was the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. you were taken again at light just to see the light. Yes. And this is a thing I did with my daughter. When she was young, her first fair, she would have only been 10 months old, but I took her down there, and, you know, a couple of little... I sat on the kiddies' rides with her, in fact, because I knew some of the showmen, and I took her down again at night, and... She's now got this um, tradition in her that she will book her holidays from work. So she's around at the fair time, and she'll argue about the fair. If anybody says they want it out, she will spark. Yeah. You know, so we are hoping these traditions do carry on with locals. They do. Yes, that's right. The, the local families still respect the fairs, don't they? As I say, we're a diminishing number, unfortunately. Yeah. It's been absolutely fascinating talking to you this morning. We've, we've learned such a lot, and, and thanks very much for uh, allowing us to come oh, talk I, to you. I hope I might have said something, but... Oh, I'm sure you have. It's a funny thing that as you get older, believe me, that your memory goes back to the earlier days, whereas if you asked me what I had for dinner yesterday, yeah. I'd have to say I can't remember. Mm. And yet you can remember going back to your young days and coming up with the various names. I mean, it's like the elf here. I could tell him he used to live up Kingsbury Street, yeah. mm -hmm. whereas somebody else, I haven't got the slightest idea yeah, right. where they live. But 
saying that, I can't remember what I had for tea yesterday either, so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it. But these old memories then become more valuable. Do you yeah. not feel, you know, it's the passing thing. Once the generation have gone, it's all going to be forgotten, isn't it? Yes. Unless there's any written stuff like yes, in Yes, the, there's any the amount. I mean, I, that's why I thank you too for the trouble you're trying, taking to try and keep this in. This, of course, to us is a pleasure, our hobby. Yes, that, fair enough, it's, but it's I mean, it, it is right? an important thing. Mm. Right. Well, thank you very much for talking yes. to us anyway, Mr. Free. It's you are very, very welcome, gentlemen. Very if you want to, to come again, don't hesitate. I, yeah. I've enjoyed it, I hope, as much as you have. Yeah. Right, well, we'll hold you to that, you see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think there were some more questions for today, but yes, we hope we have told you. That was our fear, questions. that we might wear you out. I mean, I, I even envy you those wonderful photographs. <laughs> Because I don't think Thank I've you. got, I doubt whether I've got even one of the fair, Aren't funnily really? enough, no, believe it or not. No, it's, yeah. it's funny, they were fairly scarce photographs. Yeah. You got to hunt around and a thing, people didn't think of photographing years ago, it was just a passing thing. Well, well we only had one photographer in those days, that was Mr. Roberts, <laughs> E.H. Roberts. <laughs> yes. Well, he had a shop in High Street, did he? Yes, where um, Garside had their mm -hmm. um, estate yeah, office. Yeah. It's now become Ladbrokes. That's right, they're hookies now. <laughs> Another old name gone from the town. Yeah. yeah our side was a yeah. you know, name we knew for many years. Yeah. It? Yes, they've all gone. All gone. Going from fairs at the moment, do you not feel with all these new shops coming in that Morver's not really fit for all the posh ones? Morver's still a market town, isn't it? And of course it is. You get these shops to come, they're only here for a few weeks, and they go because the we're great not really... disappointment, to my mind, is the fact that with the rents of today's hirings, you've only got to see it going on. You get first one come in, six months, yeah. pack up, go. When the living wagons were in the high street, when did the showman actually have to vacate the high street by? Under the statute, actually, it, the fair can be held is from 12 noon on Friday to 12 noon on Sunday. But again, hand it to the showman's guild. You come up here on a Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and you won't find many bits and pieces no. left. they are all done. Because... A bit, especially again the bigger machines, they do as much as they can, immediately they close down at midnight, you start pulling down, and you keep the generators going, as long as there's some lights for them to see what they're doing, then when it comes to the end of that, they've got to dismantle the lights, well then you pack up to get its light again the next morning, but the bulk of it is done after midnight. So it must have been as much of a sight to sort of see all the fair leave yes. as it was to see it come, because it would have yes, just all gone together, I would have used thought. to love to watch these, yeah. the way they put these things up and take them down again, because it's an art in itself. Mm. It's no good saying that it's, any fool could do it, they couldn't. Because mm. I believe somebody uh, on the council in the early part of last year suggested that as they pour their amusements down in the dark, they could equally put the amusements up in the dark and therefore to sort of save the shopkeepers and uh, six hours of yeah. non-custom, well, they, they wanted to... Uh, they, from what I understand was, was it last year or the year before that this cropped up? Yeah, yeah. And in recent years, the big uh, rides have been allowed to come in at 10 o'clock instead of 12, so that it lessened the mix-up with everybody fighting to get in at 12 o'clock, the big boys were allowed to come in at 10, therefore they were getting their big rides together before the smaller stuff came in. Well then, as you say, somebody created about that, and the showman, at least he admitted, they gave way, and they now I'm going to come in at 12 o'clock, yes. the rest of them. Because I think the person who said about it was, the fact that if they could put it up and run on Friday night, why couldn't they come in at 12 o'clock right, yeah. and leave another couple of hours for the, for the shopper? Yes. When Owen Heard used to run the show, so to speak, did they used to come in 
bit by bit then, or did, was it just a bun? Oh no, everybody? just willy nilly. <laughs> but then they couldn't do much until they'd argued with him as to how many feet he was going to let them out. I bet there were quite a few fights, were there? Oh yes. Yeah. As I say, he'd give it, he'd give, he'd swear as much as anybody else. <laughs> quite a character.